All right, quantum uh, mechanics. Uh, being 100% sure of a world in which nothing is 100% sure. <clears throat> the explanation of what drives reality, uh, according to quantum mechanics, is randomness. Uh, it's not causality, it's uh, a randomness that drives it at the root. And the proof is that uh, quantum mechanics made some very good statistical predictions and claims. <coughs> These causes are random, so yeah, then uh, it uh, has to be right. And it says that um, definite properties of particles are shielded from us by the uncertainty principle. And it goes even further that these definite properties do not exist until the observer makes a measurement. <coughs> and um, that last part is coming from uh, John Bell's inequality. And it's a test with entangled photons. And what that proves is that you cannot extend quantum mechanics in a way that it is has an underlying causality, which we cannot see that there are definite properties of particles underlying, but they are hidden from us, but these explain why certain particles behave in one way and other ones behave in another way. But quantum mechanics says with this John Bell experiment that no, these properties do not exist really uh, before the observer makes a, a measurement. Uh, yeah, so there is no no hidden variables extension of quantum mechanics possible. Now, if you uh, mix quantum mechanics with general relativity, you uh, get into a whole bunch of problems. Uh, now, usually that's not needed because general relativity is for very massive and very big objects and quantum mechanics is for very small tiny things. But if you go back to the Big Bang and you say, well, universe collapse, 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 you reverse that and you get to a situation where you need both quantum mechanics and general relativity and if you uh, combine these two equations then uh, you get to a quantum mechanics that predicts things with a probability of uh, more than 100% which basically means uh, that there's nonsense coming out of these equations now what does this mean? well I think it means that that uh, either general relativity is wrong or quantum mechanics is wrong because they are contradicting each other if you combine them um, and I I would go with uh, general relativity and dump quantum mechanics both theories have a lot of empirical evidence behind them but um, general relativity is much more yeah, fundamentally um, uh, conceived uh, co uh, if you compare it to quantum mechanics, which is just, uh, yeah, basically the whole theory is diced together with, uh, with let's try this rule, let's try that rule, and see if it matches. And if you, if it doesn't, you just uh, modify it a little bit until it does. And in, in a way, it's it's not as bad as string theory, but um, it's in the neighborhood, the same family, they're related. Um, and um, yeah, what I think throwing away causality, which quantum mechanics does, is is sawing off the branch you are sitting on. Because what are the quantum boys going to say when you ask them, "Is your theory true?" They they will say yes, it's true. They will not say eighty percent of the time my theory is true and twenty percent is not. They, they're, they're suddenly 100% sure about their theory, but that's impossible according to their theory. So, yeah, what is a law of nature? The law of nature says things are not random. 
Um, this is what a law of nature means. It says that some things will happen and other things will not happen, given current conditions. And it says also about the past, some things could happen and some things could not have happened given past conditions. And these laws are universal and uh, constant in space and time. So they do not say gravity only exists on Wednesdays and Saturdays. They do not say F is M times A in Berlin, but not in San Francisco. Now, if you say there is a law of nature that says random things happen, you have not stated a law of nature. If you state you have a rule about what will happen and not what will not happen, and it has at its root that things happen randomly, you have sought of the branch you are sitting on, according to me. Maybe I'm missing something. Because also the John Bell experiment, does it give the same outcome yesterday, today, and tomorrow, or in Tokyo, or on the moon? If its proponents say yes, or yeah, it is uh, an experiment, of course, and they say yes, then reality is not random. It gives consistent, consistently the same outcome. So, the, the, the thing is that around instances, uh, it, it says things are random. But about aggregates, then the probabilities, there are certainly certainty again. And in, in that way, it, it resonates a lot with things like, like child abuse, for example. That in individual instances, we cannot tell what effect it will have. But about aggregates, we get very certain. <clears throat> and I think that, yeah, like Newton's mechanics, quantum mechanics now correlates perfectly with observations. It's been tangled with uh, enough. So, uh, it correlates with experiments. But, uh, yeah, string theory will do that in the future as well. I mean, uh, if they add enough dimensions, they can make it fit any anything. But it does not mean it's true. And I think the flaw in Newton's system could be found, in hindsight, with its super perspective. And it, has a, it had a dominant role of one specific coordinate system, fixed to the stars without a reason in reality why this coordinate system would be special. And I think a similar weak spot in quantum mechanics is the role of the observer who brings about a collapse in the wave function while there is nothing unique about the observer compared to any other matter in the universe. So whose observation can bring about this collapse? So, a particle, according to this wave function, is everywhere, no one at, this, where at the same time, only a probability of it being found somewhere. But when you then look, then it's suddenly the wave function collapses and it is suddenly there at some point. And it caused Einstein to remark, do you really believe the moon is only there when you look at it? Uh, like it is everywhere and nowhere, only with a certain probability. And when you look at it, it, suddenly it snaps into a certain position. And I think both the very small and very large uh, things are invitations to human projection. Because it is very hard to directly observe. So, in that sense, QM has a strong... Um, parallels to nihilism because nihilists get very certain of the truth that there is no truth they are incapable of seeing the contradiction that they are very sure of their condemnation of other people's pursuit of truth <coughs> and in the same way quantum mechanic proponents become very convinced reality is consistently inconsistent they are 100% sure they are 100% certain of a world in which nothing is 100% certain but only at the level where the observation with a photon is like sculpting with a sledgehammer, where they cannot directly, directly observe without having a huge impact by making the observation. 
but not at the level of everyday life where all matter suddenly obeys cause and effect again and that is how of course uh, they they interact with reality as if there is cause and effect so yeah that's I, what I think is a is a contradiction in quantum mechanics but um, yeah it could be totally wrong let me know what you think <laughs>